Today we continue our discussion about media components in HTML5. We last left off talking about video. Next we will talk about audio. So let's jump right in. Right in your HTML browser, and again, you could download our source files if you're a Zero to Geek member on zero to geekcom and if not, just follow along and try to follow what we're doing. So I'm going to create a new audio element, um, and the audio is a self-contained element. Well, it's not a self-contained. We actually have to open and close the element. We, we're not allowed to subtract out of it. We'll talk about why immediately. But before we talk about why, we will first continue seeing um, how to create an audio track. So the next step is we want to set a source to our file. And we'll just put a source attribute and then define the actual source of our sound. Now I've added into our download folder, I've added some soundtracks of our, actually of our jingles. So I'm going to go right ahead and I'm just going to copy our first jingle and put it into our source attribute, which is inside of the sounds folder. So I'm just going to make sure that there's no extra, extra space there. I'll click on the Save button. And now we're just going to go right into the browser, into our new file. And I'll just click on Refresh. And you'll notice that nothing's happening. There's no sound. But actually something is happening. Because MP3 is supported in Safari. By the way, it's not in Firefox currently as we're recording it late 2013. Um, we have to actually tell the audio component to play. Because by default, it doesn't autoplay currently. So what I want to do is I want to go into my audio component and just add another attribute called auto play. Once I set the auto play and I go back into my browser, into Safari in this case that supports MP3, and click on refresh, we'll hear in the background the Zero to Geek jingle. Learning better is better. The next thing that we want to do is we want to see how can we add controls into our audio component. And by the way, everything we've seen so far is very, very similar to the way it would work with a video component. So the way we add controls is just by adding the word controls. By adding the word controls inside of the audio tab, now we could go into our browser again, click on refresh, and now not, we will have also a playback controller, which we could then start, play, pause, um, and that gives us basically the basic controls we would need for any audio component. Now the next capability that we have control over is we could set the volume by default to be muted. The way we set the volume by default to be muted is by adding the word muted into our audio controller. Saving that and going back into our browser, if we click on refresh, even though we'll see the audio playback playing, we'll see that it's going to be playing without any sound until we click on the sound volume to make it turn back on. Now the next um, next nice L capability is the capability of looping our sound. So if we have a sound that is a repetitive, that we want it to, to background music to continue on and on on our website as we're in the site, the way we would do that is by adding the property loop. By adding the property loop, we're basically adding the capability to also loop through our music. So by doing that, we could then click on refresh, and although our music now is muted, I'll unmute it, and we'll hear our music playing, and once it reaches to the end, it should restart again automatically. So let's see that. And you see that the music restarts again automatically without any, um, and it will continue on and on forever. So that's really the basic, um, basic features of our element. The next element is, for example, if we didn't say an autoplay, but we want to preload the music in advance. Or we want to not preload it. So I, just, I want to show you just a reminder, just like we did in the video component. And I'm just going to scroll into our video element and just drop it inside so we could look at it for a second. I'm going to grab it from our source files, the original video component that we've created. And you'll see that in our video, we've, we've set a preload to none. Basically meaning that we're avoiding the automatic preload of our video player, such as in scenarios where we wanted to put a poster inside. Or in the case of audio, we might want to set a preload to none because we might want to start the music later on in the process and we don't want it to start in advance. Obviously, by having an autoplay and a preload none at the same time, it kind of like automatically defeats the purpose of preload. Well, it automatically defeats the purpose of saying don't load. So in the documentation currently, at which you might, you might ask a question uh, if you know JavaScript where the language is um, 
it is case sensitive while HTML isn't case sensitive, it doesn't really matter if you put an uppercase none or a lowercase none. Now, there's no sense of talking much further about the preload without looking at it in the JavaScript implementation, but I would say um, the preload by default equals to auto. By not setting a preload or setting it to auto or even just putting the word preload, we're basically saying we want the automatic behavior, which is to preload, to happen by default. The second op option that we've met is to not load at all. And again, we've said that it only works as long as the user didn't click on the play button. And as long as autoplay is not set, because if it is, then the purpose of not loading kind of gets um, out of the way. Now, there's this third option, and the third option is actually to load only the metadata of the audio or the video for that case. Um, so in our case, it wouldn't make sense to add a metadata really um there, although it might it might add you know it really depends on how the html5 finalizes um what, what it does is just load gets the file ready but it doesn't really start downloading it it might download a few frames if it's a video or get the basic information the metadata information of the file itself um it does make sense if you're doing this in javascript because then you could start fetching information which makes a lot more sense versus if you're only working with the html5 side of things without integrating with the javascript api so we won't dig much deeper into this at this stage but if you're if you watch our javascript videos we'll definitely take a deeper look into this